far, we have been looking at accessing archival data one object at a time. This approach is fine if you want to search for information in the archives on a small sample of objects, say a few tens or maybe a few hundreds of objects. But once you go to sample sizes of thousands and tens of thousands of objects, this way of getting data from the archive becomes a very slow process. In such a situation, it is better to write a program which can automatically access the data that you are interested in. The module or the piece of code that allows you to do that is called Astro Query and it is a Python language package that will provide you with this capability. It is very easy to code in and it contains a number of sub packages for each data repository. So, there will be a separate sub package for accessing SDSS data, there will be a separate sub package for accessing catalogs in Vizier and so on. But before we go to Astro Query, let us first try to understand what Python is all about. So, Python is a programming language which happens to be the dominant language used in the analysis of astronomical data. It is the most popular language to access data in astronomical archives. It is an interpreted language with a large number of sort of auxiliary packages which are referred to either as packages or modules which are available as standard libraries and as third party supplied packages. It provides its users with a complete ecosystem for handling astronomical data. So, if you are not a programmer and you wish to learn just one programming language, then Python should be your choice. It also helps that Python is a language that is very easy to learn and perhaps more importantly easy to read. Sometimes what happens with other programming languages is that you might be quite good in writing code in that language yourself, but if you are handed over somebody else's code and asked to modify it, it becomes very difficult to understand. But Python is such a tightly structured language that it becomes <coughs> very easy for you to understand not only your code which you may have written many years ago, but also other people's code that you need to look at and modify. In order to use Astro Query in a programmatic way, you will definitely need to learn Python. Uh, we are not going to teach you Python here, but there is a detailed course available on online which is specifically for on using Python for astronomical data analysis. And I have given you the URL here, please go and uh, download the course, you can watch the videos, you can download PDFs and you can also download code snippets that are used in the teaching of the course. Python is very widely used in all of astronomy. Uh, here I give some examples of the usage of Python in optical astronomy. One of the most widely used packages for optical uh, data analysis is a package called IRAF, Image Re Reduction and Analysis Facility, which was developed uh, several decades ago uh, and is still in use. What has now happened is with the advent of Python, IRAF has been wrapped as a Python package. This means that you can use any IRAF command from within a Python program. And this is done using a package called PyRAF, which wraps all of IRAF and also provides you with additional Python only routines. Similarly, the ESO telescopes use the data reduction software called MIDAS which has been similarly wrapped and is available through Python uh, in the form of PyMidas. Access to FITS file was also wrapped with, with a program known as PyFITS 
and there are several other packages listed here below which tell you that uh, Python is used in a wide variety of situations uh, right from the solar system ephemerides uh, to uh, uh, doing the software reduction of data from the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope or the LSST. Here are some examples now from radio astronomy of Python usage. So, one of the biggest data analysis packages in Python now is called uh, CASA and uh, it has is basically a set of C++ libraries which forms the core of CASA is used to be called apes plus plus and it has been wrapped now with a python package which is called casa pi so you can now do all radio astronomy data reductions from within a python based system called as casa pi and it's the default system for reduction of uh, data sets from jvla and alma and therefore is is very well supported uh, by its developers an older package used for radio data analysis was called apes and that is still widely in use and there is now a wrapper for apes which is called parcel tongue which allows you to call apes ta tasks from within a python program uh, the iram data analysis package called gildas has also been wrapped there is a similar package for the laboka instrument on apex and other bolometers there is also an increasing trend in radio astronomy to use a python based system for building monitoring and control software for telescopes and this has been pioneered for the cat7 system uh, the control and monitoring system for the cat7 telescope in south africa was developed in python and that will now be extended to the control and monitoring system of the meerkat telescope pulsars are, a, are an important area of research in radio astronomy and one of the most widely used packages for pulsar search and analysis known as Presto uh, has its most recent routines all written in Python. So, as you can see that in a wide variety of domains be it optical astronomy and radio astronomy and also X-ray astronomy and other astronomies, uh, it is now extremely common to use a Python based package for all kinds of work. So, let us now look at the main python modules that are important for astronomy. If you look at python itself, the core language is very poor at processing arrays. Okay? It is very slow because it was never designed for fast numerical processing. So, in order to add that capability, a package called numpy was developed some years ago and it provides very fast array processing capabilities in the python language. For science one needs a number of scientific and mathematical packages that allow you to do things like obtain roots of equations, solve differential equations, invert matrices and things like that and all those capabilities all that functionality is provided in a package known as scipy. Uh, it is a very large package naturally because it provides so many different capabilities, but you can get most the solutions to most of your numerical and scientific computing problems uh, somewhere in the scipy package. Python by itself does not have any standard library for uh, plotting figures. Uh, that capability is now provided by the package matplotlib which is now the de facto standard plotting library for python uh, it's very widely used it's uh, very powerful very well documented uh, its syntax is very similar to the syntax of matlab so if you are familiar with matlab and know how to make plots in matlab uh, learning matplotlib will be a matter of minutes for you now coming to core astronomy, the most important package for astronomers is something known as AstroPy. It contains a lot of software that is relevant for astronomers and it contains basically a set of core packages with, which provide the core functionality 
we'll look at that in a minute but it also provides dozens of affiliated packages that operate well with astropy okay and last but not the least is a package called astro query which provides tools for querying online astronomical data sources right so from the point of gathering data from astronomical data archives astro query is the one module that is most important it is also an uh, affiliated package with astropy astropy itself is now uh, fairly large and provides a wide range of capabilities which are listed here uh, there is there are a set of packages related to data structures and transformations uh, transfer, uh, deals with constants units and quantities handling of uh, n dimensional data sets data tables uh, of various kinds times and dates and interconversions between say the calendar date and the julian date and so on uh, astronomical world coordinate systems uh, different kinds of modeling and fitting routines are all available there are a number of tools that allow you to do files io and communication reading of fits files writing of fits files uh, same thing with ascii tables and the vo table xml format and also the sam format so the kind of capabilities that we saw in a uh, interactive manner in aladdin and topcat etc uh, can be accessed programmatically very easily using astropy there are also some utilities for computations for example for cosmological calculations convolutions of various kinds various transforms fourier transforms and so on a module upcoming module for data visual visualization which is still not very advanced but one hopes that in the days to come it will grow more capable there's a nice package uh, called astropy.stats which allows you to compute statistics on any data that you are looking at besides that there are some nuts and bolts packages related to the registry of astropy and its configuration system its logging system its warning system and so on so let us now move to astro query astro query as i mentioned previously is an astropy affiliated package what that means is that it's not part of the core astropy package it's a separate package by itself but it is guaranteed to be interoperable with astropy so for example if you retrieve some data with astro query then you will be able to use for example astropy.stats on that piece of data to gather statistics about that data similarly if you read a file uh, or a catalog in astropy from your own hard disk and you want to send it to a web service for an online search then you can pass on that piece of that catalog or that table to astro query and it will send it over to the online service and query uh, and run the query that you wish to the way they have partitioned things is that each web service has its own sub package okay so there will be a separate sub package to access vizier there will be one to access sdss there will be one to access the ads and so on so let us look at some of the astro query modules that are available this is the list of modules as it stands today and there are several pages which we will go through now but there are many more that are in the process of being added so as one goes into the future one hopes that even more and more data archives could be directly accessed from within an astro query program simbad is a database that it's an online da database maintained uh, in france which originally used to gather data about stars but now does other objects as well 
it provides some basic data and cross identifications, bibliography and measurements for astronomical objects outside the solar system which means stars and galaxies of various kinds. The Vizier sub package of AstroQuery allows you to query the 17,000 plus uh, multi-wavelength catalogs that are hosted in the Vizier system. ESA Sky is, is a portal, <clears throat> it, it allows you to access a science driven discovery portal uh, which is uh, run by ESA. Uh, the Ir IRSA image <clears throat> server program interface provides access to a number of infrared surveys like TUMAS, WISE and the Palomar transient factory. Uh, IRS IRSA dust gives you maps of galactic reddening uh, based on 100 micron data from the IRAS survey. NED is the NASA extragalactic database. It contains a large amount of information about extragalactic objects uh, like galaxies. And uh, there is a lot of multi-wavelength data there, both collected together from various surveys and from research publications. AstroQuery gives you access to URSA, which is the NASA IPAC infrared science archive and which contains science products for all of NASA's infrared and sub millimeter missions. The UKDSS package gives you access to a near infrared survey carried out with the UKERT telescope in Hawaii. Uh, so there was a survey called the UKERT infrared deep sky survey and there are JHK images of a large area of the northern sky. There is a sub package called MACPIS which stands for the multi-array galactic plane imaging survey and contains radio data at two frequencies of the galactic plane obtained with the VLA. The NRAO package gives you access to the science data archive of NRAO. The Besencom package gives you models of stellar population synthesis in the galaxy. The NIST package maintained by the National Institute of Standards and Technology gives you access to atomic lines databases. This is very important if you want to look for atomic specific atomic transitions in your spectra for example, you will need to know where all the lines are and you can get them from here. Fermi gives you access to the Fermi gamma ray telescope archive, SDSS gives you access to the entire Sloan digital sky survey data including images, spectra and spectral templates. Alpha Alpha was a survey carried out with Arecibo uh, and that can be accessed. It is an extra galactic H1 uh, radio survey uh, that can be accessed uh, from within AstroQuery. Just like the Hubble Heritage Archive that I mentioned previously, there is also the Spitzer Heritage Archive now which contains infrared data products from the Spitzer Space Telescope and that too can be accessed from within AstroQuery. Lambda is, is a atomic and molecular line database again, various radiative transitions, energy levels, collisional rates, etc. Uh, for the astrophysically relevant atoms and molecules are uh, tabulated by a group at Leiden and therefore it is called Lambda, it is available through AstroQuery. Ogle was a is an ongoing gravitational lensing experiment and uh, it gives you a lot of in data there from on inter interstellar extinction uh, in the directions of the galactic bulge. Uh, Splatterlog is uh, NRAO maintained molecular uh, radio and millimeter line list service. So, so far we have looked at data, but there are also simulations that can be accessed now through AstroQuery. So, there is something known as the CosmoSim database, which provides results from various cosmological simulations like the multi dark project, the Bolshoi, uh, Bolshoi IP project and the Clues project. Besides this, you can gain access to the ESO archive, the ALMA archive and the Gamma database. Gamma is a galaxy evolution survey uh, that has been carried out with many different telescopes including the Hubble Space Telescope and 
of course uh, the NVAS archive. So as you can see that through a single module it becomes possible to access any sub package. So let us now go and try to look at a short demo of how simple it is to access data in Astro Query. I am going to show you only one example, but if you go to the Astro Query documentation, you will find that there are numerous examples for any kind of data set that you like. So for example, I am going to show you some how to access data in Simbad, but the process for accessing data in SDSS or in TUMAS, etc. is very similar. The syntax is very similar, the APIs are broadly consistent with each other. So if you learn how to do it for one data repository, it is quite trivial to extend it to another data repository. So what we have just opened a terminal in which I am going to start the Python interpreter. So there are several Python interpreters available. I use a very user friendly one called IPython3. When I type IPython3, it shows me a prompt. So I am now in the Python interpreted language. What I am going to do now is just show you the code that we are going to run. Let us now go over the code line by line and I will run each line as after I show you the what the code means. So the first line simply tells the shell that I want you to use the Python 3 interpreter when you run this program. So this is useful when you want to just run the whole program at one go but we are not going to do that. We are going to run the program one line at a time. The first thing I do is I type from astroquery.simbad import simbad. So what does this tell Python? It tells Python that from this particular package astroquery.simbad I want to import a function named or a sub package named simbad. Okay. So I just press return and if there is no error, one assumes that things have gone through. So what has happened now is that in the namespace of python, we have actually imported the module called simbad. Now the second one is actual running of the query. So what does that line say? Result table is equal to simbad.query object m1. So what it basically says this line does is it sends a query to the simbad service saying that there is an object which is referred to as m1. Okay, this is of course the supernova remnant which is referred to as the crab nebula, a messiah object one. I want you to send me what information you have on this object. Once that information is result, uh, returned, it gets stored in a table which is referred to as result table. So let us run the query. So many things will happen in the background. Uh, a connection will be made to the Simbad database. Uh, this query will be sent. Uh, the results of that query will come back and they will get stored in the result table. So all this has happened in a very small fraction of uh, very small amount of time. And now in the result table, we have now the information that we wanted from about this object. So there you go. So it tells you what M, uh, M1 is, what is its main ID, what is its coordinate, the right ascension and declination are indicated here. 
uh, and some other basic inf uh, information and at the end it gives you a bibliographic code. It gives you the name of the paper from which this information has been collected. So, if you wanted more information on exactly how these positions were obtained or all these other parameters were obtained, you would need to go and refer to this paper. Right. Now, let us do something a little more complicated. We change that result table line to simbad dot query object m in square bracket 1 to 9. Okay. So, what this means is use every value between m 1 and m 9 and send a separate query for each of them. So, ask simbad for information on m 1 then ask it for information on m2, ask it for information on m3 and so on up to m9. These are all messier objects of various kinds. Wildcard equal to true tells this particular function that you should use wildcards while interpreting the input. So, then it knows that this is not some object called m square bracket 1 dash 9, it is actually to be interpreted as a wildcard. If I say wildcard equal to false, it will work very differently. So, there you go, it sends a query to Simbad, it gets a response and it stores again it in the same result table. So, if I print the result table now, you see that now I have gathered much more information all the way from M1 to M9. Uh, they are all of course at different uh, positions on the sky and even the papers that give you this information are, are somewhat different and for every object you get a bibliographic code, a bibliographic reference for more information. So, so this makes it extremely easy for us to query almost any database. Remember we did not even specify uh, what we really wanted. Okay, we just told it I want information on this object, we did not have to specify what is its position on the sky, whether it is a planetary nebula or a galaxy, nothing, just a name. I am going to show you now another program which is very similar to this one. We will not run it here, but I just want to go through the program so that you realize how similar it is to access another archive compared to the Simbad example that we just saw. Okay. So, this is a short program over here that allows you to query the SDSS database. So, the first line is identical and now we are going to import something called capital SDSS from astroquery.sdss. We need to import one more astro pi module this time which is coordinates. This module takes coordinate strings in various formats and uh, converts them into a standardized format which can then be sent uh, to the database that you are querying. The next line which starts with pos equal to quads dot sky quad etcetera, it basically converts the coordinates that we have given here in terms of right ascension and declination uh, into a, a standardized format which is then stored in the variable pos, pos. The next line actually does xid is equal to sdss query regions pos spectro equal to true. So, this seems this does a large number of things in one line. So, what it does is it sends a query to the SDSS service and tells it I am interested in a region around this position pos. Okay. So, there will be some default region I think it is about 30 arc minutes that it searches around this specific uh, position and spectro equal to true. So, which means only return to me objects for which you have a spectrum. Right? 
and then it prints the value of x i d and then of course, you have you would you may want to get the spectrum fetch the spectrum and that is done by this command s p is equal to s d s s dot get spectra matches is equal to x i d. So, for all the objects that are returned here. So, this particular query if you run it I think returns only one object, but if you increase the search radius for example, you could get many objects and all of those spectra would then get downloaded using the single command sdss dot get spectra. If you wanted instead of getting the spectra you wanted to get the images of that object you would do m is equal to sdss get images matches is equal to x i d band is equal to g this specifies that you want to download image for, for the g band. Note that there is a hash in front of it which indicates that this is a commented line. So, if I wanted to actually run that I would need to uncomment that remove that hash sign and then it would run. So, as you have seen from these two examples that I showed you it is very very easy for you to run uh, write and run very short pieces of code in order to gather data from uh, for the objects of your interest. For example, here we have only one object of interest at this particular coordinate, but you could easily put this, this piece of code into a loop wherein you would read in the first coordinate of the first object in your sample, supply it here, run the query region, download the images and spectra and then repeat this exercise one by one for all the objects in your sample. So, it is absolutely trivially easy to gather data from everywhere you can even do cross matches you can mix and match data you can download some data from SDSS download some data from TUMAS some other data from Fermi combine it together using AstroPy you, there are even modules for you to display all of it together combine it together into an RGB image and so on. So, there is really no limit to how complicated uh, you can make your Astro query program. There are uh, I have shown you a very short two very short examples of code, but there are more complicated examples in the Astro query documentation. I urge you to go to the Astro query website and uh, read about read the documentation. They give you very long examples two or three pages long which combine data from multiple surveys and make plots and things like that. So, I hope you have convinced you that it is very straightforward and extremely easy to access data using Astro query and uh, in fact, once you start using it, it becomes second nature and it is definitely a very fast and efficient way of gathering data even when you are doing only a few objects because what you can do here is that once the data are downloaded, you can systematically classify them and store them in separate files and so on. So, with by running a single program, you can gather all manners of information about your sample.